course, the top story this afternoon is the interviews taking place at the union buildings for the head of the National Directorate of Public Prosecutions. Let us now take you live. There where our reporter, Patricia Fisahi, is standing by with one of the panelists, the Minister of Energy, Jeff Khadebe. Pat, it's over to you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Palisa. Indeed, uh, that uh, three-day uh, marathon interviews that has been taking place here at the Union Buildings to, of course, uh, appoint uh, a fit and proper NPA head has just concluded here. Um, uh, of course, you would know that uh, the uh, Minister of Energy, Jeff Khadebe, has been chairing um, the panel. Eight men that were, of course, leading the interview processes here. Um, uh, those grueling questions that we saw that uh, the 11 candidates were subjected to. So let's just speak to the minister. It's really been an intense three days, even for the media. We were here on the first day until late at night, around past eight. Um, that's when the process concluded. Minister, just your overall impressions about how the process has been going so far. Well, my overall impression is that the process has been very fair. We issued a, a public uh, advert for anybody to be nominated or a person to apply and we had about 45 nominations and we shortlisted 12 of very good candidates. Now, the important thing to do now is to evaluate and assess so that we can be able to come with three or four names that can be provided to the president. Now, going back to the constitutional court ruling, we know that the president obviously does not have much time. He has to appoint a new leader at the NPA by mid-December. Uh, That's really next month. So in less than a month, uh, the country needs to have a new uh, NPA ahead. Um, after today, how much time will it take for the panel to really conclude and really shortlist? We know that three candidates or recommend, recommended candidates will be sent to the president. How much time are we talking about here? Well, uh, I, I cannot be able to be specific about time, but as soon as I finish this interview, we start the process of evaluating as well as assessing all these 11 candidates so that we can be able to ensure that we present to the president three or four names. But as you can see, we're taking very copious notes. And you have seen these uh, panelists are very, very aggressive. So I cannot predict when we can finish this process. But we, I can assure South Africans that it will be done as soon as possible. Going back to the uh, candidates, 11 of them, um, People would want to know how exactly were they nominated. Just to remind South Africans again, how did we get to the 12 uh, uh, shortlisted candidates? Of course, we know that Breitenbach had withdrawn. It brought the number down to 11. But how did that nomination process take place? Just in short, a reminder. We had about three or four meetings since uh, the president appointed us uh, to ensure that the process is fair, and that we give everybody in South Africa who's fit and proper in terms of Section 179 to apply or to be nominated for this very crucial position in the criminal justice system. We sat down for many hours evaluating all these 45 names and we came up with the 12 that we believe can be able to go for this final interview. That's what we've been doing for the past three days. Very balanced, a lot of people said. We had six uh, women and six uh, men, um, really reflecting as well the diversity of the country. I mean, we had all races as well, if one really need to go into those type of matters. Yes, indeed, uh, but at the end of the day, we're looking for a capable person who will be able to be ensure that he or she is fearlessly defend the Constitution so that when they take decision to prosecute, it is without favor uh, or prejudice. And differently this time, the media being involved, the public really having that first-hand glimpse of how the process unfolds and what it takes for um, a fit and proper candidate to eventually be um, appointed to this crucial position. Well, uh, as we are here with us and the public out there, so I'm sure we'll come up with the candidates that many South Africans uh, will be feel very proud of. Uh, just lastly, uh, Minister, we've heard uh, some of the complaints on social media, in particular about uh, uh, some of the panelists, including yourself, some saying, but um, why are you chairing and not the Minister of Justice? Well, I'm not the President of the Republic. He appointed me, and uh, all the panelists that are here are not conflicted whatsoever.
Right, everything above board there. You hear it from uh, the Minister of Energy, Jeff Khadeba, who was, pan uh, who was chairing rather um, the panel that uh, was responsible for helping President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, to select uh, the three or four names um, that he can now choose from and, uh, uh, of course, honour that constitutional ruling to appoint a new leader at the NPA. We know that the, the President has until the 19th of December to make up his mind about who is fit and proper to lead the NPA. Um, of course, it's something that we'll have to watch uh, very closely and see how that develops within the couple of uh, next days or weeks. The president will definitely involve uh, the, the country and update the country and, of course, perhaps uh, uh, share his decision with the republic. Vanessa, it's back to you.